Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2006, it's a Ford Expedition, and we have a bad wheel bearing in the front here. The Expedition is the same as the, uh, the Lincoln Navigator, and it's the same as the F-150. All right, but this is the, uh, the problem that we're having with it. You can see that movement in the wheel. That's what's making the noise when we, uh, when we take the vehicle out for a drive. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this wheel off. And once we get it off, we'll come back and then we'll, we'll get started and we'll get this job done. The way you get these clips off is you just push on the uh, clip, you push it back, and you pull it out. And it, uh, it comes right out of the caliper. And there's a little clip right here that just pushes right out. All right, once you have that off, we're going to take the caliper off. And the way we do that is just pop out these little clips in the back of the caliper. Should be two of them. And you take a, uh, a Torx bit, and you can get in there with a Torx bit, and I'll unscrew the caliper from the uh, from the truck. You got it loosened up. We just want to fry the caliper off the truck. Okay, and you can take the caliper off and never let the caliper hang by itself. Always put a hanger underneath it and support it so that it's not hanging on its own. And just put it out of the way. We're going to make, take the brake pads off and now we're going to remove this mounting bracket right here. It should be an 18 millimeter uh, nut in the back that we're going to take off. Now we'll take that bracket off. Take that off and out of the way. Rows up, come off the truck like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop this cap off right here. We'll take that cap off of here and we'll unscrew the nut underneath there. And then we're going to take out the bolts from in the back over here. And we're going to remove this from the truck. So let me uh, get started on it and show you how it goes. Right out. We're going to reuse this, so put it on the side for now. We're going to remove that nut right there. It's probably like a uh, 15 millimeter, uh, probably about 13 millimeter. The way you can take that off if you have the wheel off, you just take a screwdriver and you can just. Hold it and unscrew the nut. And we're going to save this too because we're going to need to put this back on. Remove that. And we're going to go around in the back of the uh, back of the knuckle and we're going to remove the bolts in the back of the knuckle to take off the uh, the hub bearing. I'm going to take out the four bolts I told you about. The ABS sensor we're not going to worry about because the, the new caliper, uh, the I'm sorry, the new hub bearing as I just saw comes with the new ABS sensor already mounted in it so we're going to uh, leave the ABS sensor connected and we're going to take these bolts out. But uh, we're going to take the ABS sensor out. Okay, we just 
going to unplug the sensor itself. And the way you do that, is up underneath here, there's a little pin, you push that pin in, and it unplugs right out. So you just push the pin in, and you just pop it right out. And we're going to take out this little screw right here, it's a little 8 millimeter. this also. Once the ABS sensor is disconnected, totally disconnected, now we're ready to uh, take off the, uh, the bearing itself. We have the nut out, so it's ready to come off. So it's no good. You don't have to worry about reusing it. So we're just going to bang it a few times. And it comes right out. And then we're going to feed the sensor right through here. Hopefully it fits through. It doesn't, so we're just going to take out that. We're going to remove this screw right here so we can get the ABS sensor out. And the reason I'm going to do that is not so much for this one, because this is no good. I can just cut it and throw it away, but i got to feed the new one back through there. So let me just remove that. off and let me grab the new one and we'll uh, we'll put it back together. Okay, that's the new uh, the new hub right now. Now remember your ABS sensor was facing up to the top so that's the way we want to put it back in. So let's just get it into its position. We'll catch a couple of bolts in the back. Remember we're going to reuse the bolts that we took off. We're going to uh, use these all over again. Let me touch them into the back. Before you tighten the bolts up, you catch all four of them and turn them in as far as you can by hand, and then we'll, uh, we'll do with the ratchet, but turn them in as far as you can by hand first. Once you've got them all in there, now you can make everything tight. Okay, now once we have the, uh, the bearing tight, we're going to put the ABS sensor back where it belongs behind this backing plate or the uh, dust shield, I should say. And we're going to install the screw that we took out. Screw it in by hand. Once you got it screwed in by hand, then you can tighten it with the ratchet. Make sure you screw it in by hand first, though. Just snug. It doesn't have to be tight. As you recall, we disconnected this. As you recall, we disconnected this from right up in here. So we're going to uh, put that back in the same way we took it out. Doesn't have to be real tight. I'm just going to snug it in there because it seats itself, and then keep it from getting caught up in anything. Right. And we're going to put the ABS sensor back into the clips that it came out. Reconnected the sensor here, 
put them back into each one of their clips right here as it belongs. I'm going to reconnect this up into the top right up in here. Plugged it back into its harness and we're going to re-plug this back in where it came out right up in here. Okay, now the next thing we'll do is we'll take our axle uh, nut, we'll put it on here, screw it on by hand as far as you can, and then we'll come in with the ratchet and we'll tighten it up and we'll hold the, uh, the hub so it doesn't rotate with the screwdriver and we'll make it uh, fairly snug. We will come back and torque this later on, but for now we're just going to tighten it down so we can continue. We have it torqued back on. We're going to reinstall the cap that we previously took off. We just put it on the top here and just tap it. And it pops right in. Make sure, make sure it's flush all the way in as it belongs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall our, uh, our rotor and we'll start putting our brakes back on. But I always do to make it a little bit easier trying to get everything caught. Just screw a lug nut onto it. It'll hold your rotor in place while you try to reattach everything else onto here. All right. Now, uh, as you remember, we took our mounting bracket off of the uh, off here. So we're going to reattach the mounting bracket. You lay it in place and reinstall your bolts. And after your mounting bracket is tight, now we're going to reinstall our caliper and uh, put that on. We lay our brake pad in. We're going to grab our caliper that we have suspended over here. And we're going to reinstall the caliper onto the truck. Remember, do everything by hand. Don't do anything with the uh, ratchet until after everything is caught. Tight. Then we're going to uh, reinstall the caps that we took off to keep any debris from going inside the, uh, the bolt holes. And we're going to reinstall the clip. There's the anti-rattle anti clip. And the way I usually do it is you connect the bottom. We're going to catch this little clip here, right in here where it belongs, right there, on the bottom. And then we're going to push this over to here. Once the clip's on, we're going to throw the tire on, and we'll see how it is. Okay, and this is what a normal bearing should look like. You should have no movement in the wheel whatsoever. So let's try it. And as you can see, it's nice and tight just the way it's supposed to be. All right, so this just job is done and out the door. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.